Hey guys, what's up? First time doing a voiceover. Cool. So, um, I would normally be using a WordPad thing, but I don't have the ability to do that, mostly because my recording software is bad, so I can't change what's displayed. So I'm just going to be doing a quick voiceover of my tier list and going over characters sort of briefly. Or some characters I might go more in depth about, depending on how good they are or how well I know them. But for some of these, I don't know them all that well. I just sort of play tested them a few times and then tiered them. I'll be honest. But all of this is entirely opinion based on who I think the strongest Sanses are in the game based off either my own experiences, experiences two of my friends had who helped me with this tier list, or just the overall opinion of the community. I know you can't always take the community seriously because they just consider some characters that aren't even good broken, but you know. Anyway, if we're going to start with who tier, all I have to say is this is a joke tier because limbo means nothing. Like it's just a copy and paste sand with two eyes. To with two white eyes and fully black on a black map. That's it. He is literally pointless. Next we have Swap Sands here. This is the worst sands in the game. Five wins, costs more than Pacifist Phase 1, yet is god awful. Literally the worst sands in the game. His damage sucks, his moves are just bad. And then you also have to factor in the only thing he has going for him is his HP and his jump. And even then, you can't kill anybody with this pitiful damage. Anyway, next we have Gambling Addiction Tier, which is what it is. Literally just characters that rely on gambling. Unseen Ending Act 3 is entirely gambling based if his moves even go the direction they need to go. Most of the time, they just outright miss and you never get hit. The only way to do anything with Unseen Ending Act 3 is using an auto clicker, and that's what I did not factor into this tier list. I didn't factor in any outside methods of being able to enhance your gameplay, like exploits, auto clickers, and so on, because that's just cheating. Anyway, next we have Ink Sans here. He is in Gambling Addiction because like, I would have put him below Swap Sands because his damage is even worse base, but the fact he has the vials and the fact you can pull out admin moves when you hit a certain amount of wins keeps him from being worse than Swap Sands in my eyes. The vials boost his damage enough, and the moves he can pull out are insane. So, it's really just dependent on if your RNG is good with the vials and also good with the, um... Pulls of moves, because if you get a good move, you can just shred everything immediately. Anyway, next we have really easy tier. Delta Sands. Probably the second worst Sands in the game, in my opinion. It is, um, he is very bad. Like, all he has under his belt is the fact he can knock you back a lot. That's it. That's really just the entirety of Delta Sands. Phase 2 is okay, but Delta Sands Phase 1 is so bad, it just kind of... You have to rely on Phase 2, basically, to do anything at all. Because Phase 2 is the only one with actual moves that deal any form of damage. And even then, Phase 1 does have a few okay moves, but it's just worse overall than the other options here. Anyway, next we have Outer Dust, the third worst sands in the game. Where do we even start? All of his moves are just garbage for the most part. Like, for a low-wing character, he's not even good. There's better options. I just don't know, man. He is just really bad. Then we have Ruins Dust. I don't think I need to explain this one, because Evo Ruins is notoriously bad. Next, we have Standard Science Sands, not Super Science Sands. He's way, he's a bit underrated, in my opinion. He's basically a low-wind camping god, in a sense. He can camp all day, all night, no matter what you do. But it's just the fact that he's obviously low-wind, so his moves are a lot easier to deal with. So, that's the main reason he's here. The J, 
for Underswap Papyrus or whatever the community names him. Honestly, I don't get the joke. Anyway, the J is this is pretty good for a 15 wins. He's very strong. He can camp forever in those side bones, and he also does pretty solid damage. So he's a really good character, I'd say, for the low wins. Next, we have Pacifist Phase 1. I know this may seem surprising, but he is really good. Just really good. He's zero wins, yet he can get he's stronger than a lot of other characters, just because of a few reasons. One, Bone Wall is very broken on him. It has a dumb hitbox. And two, he can just king up forever, and it is annoying. And he is strong, and it is obnoxiously good. Next, we have Underfell Sands, which I'm not going to explain because I'm going to save it for Sands' explanation. All you need to know is he's a slightly worse Sands for one reason. Anyway, Sands. So, Sands is very good, mostly because of his damage on top of his KR and so on. He's just very, very strong. For his win count. I would go so far as to say he is broken for his win count. He costs 20 wins. I have come so close to beating determination users with this character. Of course, they probably have skill issue, but that also says how damaging Sans is. The only reason Underfell Sans is lower, like slightly lower, is the fact that Underfell Sands has orange bones instead of blue. That's literally the only reason. If he had blue bones as well, he'd be basically equal to Sands. Like, literally equal. Both are exactly the same. It's just that Underfell Sands has orange bones instead of blue, making it easier, slightly easier to deal with them. Next, we have Fresh Sands. And, ooh boy, where do I start? Fresh Sands is really campy and does pretty solid damage and is just very obnoxious. Enough said. Next we have Whore Sands. I know this is going to come as a surprise to some of you, but to those who know how atrociously bad Whore Sands is, this is not a surprise. Whore Sands Phase 1 has gotten no buffs and has been after the rework, and has been consistently very trash. His damage is god-awful. His overall moveset is the most easy thing to dodge ever. Like, honestly, he might even be down really easy, but I felt I feel like putting him up here makes more sense, because he, he can still beat players, it's just the fact that you have to put in a lot of unneeded effort in comparison. Like, he is just bad, honestly. For his win count, he is hot garbage. There's no point in using him. You are just making your life hell. If he had less wins, he wouldn't be really that bad. He'd be pretty good if he had less wins. But for his win count, he's not great. Next, we have True Fresh. I didn't exactly know where to put him, because I don't play him, and neither none of my friends do. <laughs> But from what I've seen, he's pretty alright. Like, he's good, but also not, in a sense. I can't really go into too much depth, though, because I don't know too much on him. Anyway, next we have Loa Weak Dust. This character used to be ungodly broken before, because people have been able to beat really bad Asgore's with him. I say really bad... Because they were really bad. You cannot beat Nazgore with this character. But after the nerfs, he was pretty balanced. Like, he's still kind of broken because his damage is very high. But overall, he's not that bad of an offender anymore. He's just okay. He's good. He's good. I'll just leave it at that. Next, we have Dream Sands. This guy is very underrated. He's only used for dream farming, and that's it. When in reality, he's actually a very solid character. He is basically the Senator Armstrong meme, with Raiden from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance 
punching Senator Armstrong and him not moving. Dream just heals everything off, no matter what. It is ridiculous. Next we have Comic Sans, aka the pretty solid badge character that a lot of people don't really use. His blasters are devastating and that's literally just all he needs. Next we have Epic Sans. I don't think I need to explain why he's this high. Time Stop, Big Bone, Blast Them All, you know, the usual. Alright, next we have Kinda Easy. These characters are obviously going to be kinda easy to beat. They're harder than easy and really easy, but they're still kinda easy when you're competent. Air Sands. He is very good, but also very underrated. He is a powerful character with a powerful blaster. But He's basically UV air without the puppets. So he's, of course, just pretty good for what he is, but not great. Anyway, next we have Gaster. This character is criminally underrated. He costs zero wins, all he needs is a badge, and you can't see any of his moves. And he hits like a freight train. A lot of people say, oh, he should be way better. No, he's good enough. Next we have Evo Low LV Dust, aka Snowden Dust for the Evos. I don't think I need to explain this one. It's an Evo character. Snowden Dust is really good for what it's worth. So I don't need to explain that. Horror Phase 2. After the Hunger iframes, he became... Like, he's still not even close to worth it. But he became slightly better at most. He got moved up a bit from last time. I think I was like below air last time. He got moved up. But he's still not good in both stages. Still need a serious buff to be moved out of here. They are way too bad. Next we have our Tail Sands. After the... I originally put him really high up on the tier list, like medium wind stompers, I think, because of the fact that you could spam time stop and deal insane damage. But after time stop became one-time use and his damage got slightly nerfed, I still think he's overpowered, but I also don't think he's as bad as he was. So he got moved down. He used to be a bug glitch tail sands, but he got moved down. For the fact that time stop got nerfed and his damage got nerfed, so he became, of course, worse. Next, we have Glitch Tail Sands. Literally every other, every Undertale fan game personified. Literal blaster spam, and his blaster glide is, of course, busted. On top of that, now it can suddenly shoot a blaster. I don't remember that ever being a thing, but yeah, you can use the blaster glide as a projectile too, which is busted. Next we have, you either lose or, or tie when fighting against him, Logan Edition. This, this tier is going to come back up in the higher ones, but this is just Geno Sands. I don't think I need to explain this. Force, blasters, lots of damage, you know, the usual. And also a big map, so it's hard to catch him with massive AoE moves. Bad time duo. For medium wind stompers, this is characters that basically stomp medium wind servers. Or are just in general better than these characters here. Like in these tiers. Medium wind stompers, bad time duo. A lot of people underrate this character now, but for the cost he's at, he basically beats every medium one lobby. Next we have Dust Swap Papyrus. Every single Papyrus character is broken somehow. And this is just one of them. I'm not even going to explain it, I just want y'all to see this. I just want y'all to see this for yourselves, because he is busted. Next we have Killer Phase 1. This may come as a surprise, but Killer Sands actually has an interesting mechanic that me and my friend discovered, and we sort of basically just developed the killer meta 
without fully exposing it. I'll go more in depth in another video probably. But next we have Shattered Dream. He's lower than Nightmare for his own reasons. But um, Shattered Dream is very strong and overall just way too good. Like seriously, this character is busted. Next we have Nightmare, who the only way you can win, unless you're a high win player, is by having good RNG. You can't kill him otherwise. 666,000 6, 666 HP. Busted. Alright, hard tier is basically hard, like outside of, mostly outside of the um, medium wins. And it's just characters that are very hard to beat. Or like harder to beat. Not really very hard, but yeah. SS Kara, bottom of this tier because SS Kara is not that good. It's just that SS Kara does a lot of damage. Really, that's all that SS Kara has going for him. Ultra Sands. Yeah, he's not great, but his one-handed blaster was very good. So. Seraphim. He is... He still needs buffs, in my opinion, but he definitely needs buffs. He's too low for what he's worth. But overall, his big attacks are very damaging and hard to deal with at times when you're like a lower win player or around his win count sometimes he can be very annoying cross sands soul grab plus blaster is a free 500 damage combo enough said evo bad time sands evo geno line is very op Evo Bad Time can beat like most combos as it is. I have tested this, it is very broken. And he's very underrated. Evo Dust Tail Waterfall. Force Blaster Barrage. Enough said. On top of that, spear hitboxes are, you know, bad. Spam Tongue. He's a tank. He will not move, and he is very good for that. He is literally the definition of a damage sponge. Sudden changes. Spawn kill. That's all I have to say. He spawn kills you. Hotland. Literally just waterfall dust, but on steroids. Dust of belief. It's literally the same situation as dust swap down. It's literally just the same as Dust Swap here. Dust Belief just, the only difference between the two that makes Dust Belief better is A, his damage is higher, and B, he has a bigger bone spin. Dust Belief has a smaller one, or Dust Swap has a smaller one, Dust Belief has a big one. Neutral Run Sands, or Tears in the Rain Sands. He is a glass cannon. A very, very good glass cannon. Definitely deserves more play. If you're good with him, he is a monster on medium wins or some higher win servers. I wouldn't say like 4k plus, like probably 1k, maybe 2k. You can probably beat those people if you're good with them. Reaper Sands, DK stacking. His DK stacking is busted. Classic Swap Papyrus Phase 2. Phase 2 is balanced, honestly, in my opinion. His Phase 2 is the most balanced form of him. I'll explain why on Phase 1, when I get to Phase 1, which is up top more. Bad Time Trio. Literally smash your face into your keyboard and kill people. No more deals, Kara. In 1v1s, No More Deals is one of the easiest characters to beat because you can just run in a straight line and win. But in a group, if the people in the group don't spread out, then you, can, you just take a little of the damage for no reason. It's annoying. High LV Dust, not the Evo one. Very good character overall. 
He has high damage, but it's just the fact that his moves are mostly slower, so it's harder to do well with him. But he's good. Air Sands. UV Air Sands. Puppets, Strings, Blasters. He is, he's not good by any stretch of the imagination. He's kind of carried by his one shot. But he is solid. I'll say that much. He's solid. Insanity. He is probably one of the most skill based characters in the game. If you're good with him, he can shred Asgore's. If you're bad with him, you're going to lose every single match in the game. Which is why he's here. His potential makes him a very good character, in my opinion. Disbelief Phase 1. Don't need an explanation for this one. Disbelief Phase 1 is notoriously good. Disbelief Angry Phase 2. I feel like Angry Phase 2 is probably the most balanced of the phases. He doesn't have any super overpowered gimmicks like the other two like the other phases do, or some of them are underpowered, but you get the point. UV Ink Sands. He was already here, but do the but his damage is so insane and the fact he has void on all of his attacks now, I feel like he's very good as a character, very broken for his win count. But I don't think I can move him any higher for one reason. LB20 does. This character has Force Plus Circle Blasters that guarantee death no matter what. It is dumb, and this character is dumb, like all Evos. That's why I didn't put UV Ink higher. Yes, LV-20 does can be beat. Yes, that's true. But the fact he can mash every single move with a bad hitbox and hit you no matter what, and the fact that LV-20 does does so much damage is wild. He is stupid good. Classic Swap Phase 1. The reason why this one is a whole tier higher than Classic Swap Phase 2 is the fact that he has Blue Soul plus Bone Sliders. That alone just moves him way up. That combo is unavoidable. If you stop moving, you get blasted. If you move, you get chipped away by the blue bone sliders. On top of that, he has another move that comes back into him, so if you approach him, you get attacked from the back by a bunch of bones. He is very good. Next we have Papyrus and Sands, aka the first phase of rejuvenation. They are a stalling god. They can stall forever. It is insane. Next, we have Disbelief Standard Phase 2. Blue Soul plus Bone Spinner. Bone Wall plus Rapid Blasters. Enough said. Outer Dust. Very good because of the jump. Outer Dust is very good because he has the jump. If he didn't have the jump, he'd probably be lower. But I feel like the jump height and all that kind of carries him, in a sense. On top of his absurd damage in Aeoria, but you get the point. Killer Sands Phase 2. Literally the same as Phase 1. Basically, I'll just explain this really quickly. His counter increases in damage every time it activates. It, on Phase 1, it increases by 50 damage. On Phase 2, it increases by 100. Able to be stacked up to about 900 damage every time it's activated. And knowing how dumb public logs are, this is very easy to do. And even against competent players, if you time it right, you get free damage stacks. So yeah, Killer is busted. I'll go over this way more in depth if I ever make a video about him. So. Next we have Undyne. Undyne has been significantly gutted. Mostly because of the global cooldowns, I feel like Undying the Undying is trash and needs a buff. Because the global cooldowns have just gutted her. <laughs> Next we have Krampus. Krampus is, um, he's underrated, but he's also not super great either. I do feel like he's good, but he's not like overpowered good. 
What he can do is he can pick people off with his speed, his bulk, and his overall ability to just vanish. So if you use him correctly to pick off specific people and then finish the job afterward, he can be pretty good, but I feel like you're going to be putting in more effort than what you'll perceive. Basically, do you want to put in more effort for less reward, just for the satisfaction, or not? Is the choice you're making. TS Underswap Papyrus, Phase 1. Oh boy, where do I start? TS Underswap Papyrus, Phase 1 has always been busted. I'm not even going to go into detail. You know why this character is busted if you fought for more than five minutes. It is very annoying. Xkara. Xkara is this high because... Oh wait, I forgot to mention. Kind of difficult. Basically, better than challenging. Xkara. So, Xkara has the one-shot, which if you're close to the right person, you can pick who you one-shot which is very handy. X-Car also does a lot of damage, but the thing is, X-Car is also reliant on more skill-based players, because you need to aim to get the most damage for your effort. So in my opinion, X-Car is a perfect example of a powerful character that requires skill, as is Tears in the Rain Sands. Both are in the similar boat there. Next we have Undertale Last Breath, or Last Bread, or Remember Son, Dying is Gay, Sam's. So, basically, ULB Sam's is busted now. After the damage buff, he became unbearably good. So, yeah. That's all I have to say about him. The damage buff and the nerf to his passive heal that he gives to the Karas, so basically now he can out-damage his heal on phase 3, and he does insane damage on top of it, kind of pushed him over the edge. In my opinion, all he needs is a damage reversion, and he's immediately balanced again. Basically revert him to before he probably buffed the damage. Next we have Evo Aerosands. This character is really good, for obvious reasons. Trap him, blast him, one-shot him. Trap him, soul string, immediately break the soul, then blast him, guarantee the one-shot. It's very good. Next we have Negative Tail Sands, aka the Sands that steals your liver. He is, uh, how do you say it? Stupid? Steal your items, get more dodges, possibly get a speed potion to run as fast as you be killer, tracking blaster for free damage, etc. Classic swap phase 3. Literally just phase 1 and phase 2 combined into something even better. I'm not even going to go over this. Evo Geno. In my opinion, Evo Geno is better than Evo Air because of his AoE and his big map, on top of the fact that his blasters are better, in my opinion. But that's just me. Hard Mode Insanity. Hard Mode Insanity is, of course, busted. But it's also because he can lag your game. So if he, if you're fighting him while you're lagging, he's probably more up here. But without lag, he's still really good. Dust Fell. Force them into the wall and then blast them. That's literally all you have to do to murder everyone. That's just how good he is. Evo High LV Dust. He is really underrated. Literally, just Force plus Blaster equals death. Especially since High LV still has Imbull attacks. Unlike LV20 and FDY. Disbelief Papyrus Phase 4. It's just a good finisher phase, but if it I feel like if it wasn't for the fact that you could heal during the cutscene between Phase 3 and 4, he'd be higher. But overall, he's just really good. For a finisher phase, anyway. FDY does Sans. Literally all homing in attacks. You can't aim any of them. 
It's so dumb. Next, we have Camping Gods, literally home to two characters, Swapfell and Alpha. And I don't think I need to explain these, I'll just go over it briefly. These characters are borderline unbeatable without a holy. Like, if you don't have a holy or a high wind combo, you aren't going to beat these guys because they can camp forever. It is so annoying. Anyway, next we're in the difficult tier, which is, of course, above all the other tiers. TS Swap Phase 2. Very busted character. I'm not even going to go into detail on this one. TS Swap Phase 2 is just literally Phase 1 on crack. That's basically Phase 2. Next we have Display Phase 3. I still think Display Phase 3 needs a heavy buff. He costs 6,000 wins and is utter garbage. He gets beat by Asgore's overwrites and swap nice with ease. But the reason he's this high is because at max potential, he can beat an Asgore too. It just takes a lot of effort. That's really just it. He takes a lot of effort and does still definitely need buffs, but he's not as bad as people say, I guess. Next we have Shanghaivania. Um, not a lot of people use him enough, honestly, because he has a lot of ways to get free damage on you. That I won't really go over too much, but I will say he has one move that's literally just homing blue bones that always stay on you. And he also has one that's a homing orange bone thing, meaning you always have to move and you always have to stand still at the same time, meaning free damage. It is very annoying. Next, we have Unseen Ending Act 2. If you guys have fought this monstrosity, you would know. His big spinning bone can do upwards of 900 damage. On top of that, he has 3000 health, a spammable big bone zone that can be comboed into the um, big bone spin for more free damage. And he's just really tanky and strong. Next we have Dust Trust. I'm not going to go into too much depth. He's underrated, I will say that. Like, a lot of people call him bad because he loses to overwrites and um, swap knives. But in reality, he's he invalidates basically every other combo, which is why he's so high. He beats every other combo. The only way to counter him is with combos that can build up stacks like swap knife and overwrite. And also having a holy in case you need it. Next we have Fatal Error. Not Evo Fatal, just standard, standard Fatal. His damage isn't that great, but the fact he can just one-shot an entire lobby if he hits you once is um, not good balancing, if I do say so myself. But yeah, basically if y'all, if multiple people get hit by a string, you literally... If one of you gets hit with one shot, all of you get hit with it. For some reason. Next we have Venom Stands. Very fast, very powerful, but also basically a glass cannon. He just hits like a truck. That's a lot to say. Next we have Very Annoying Tier. These characters can be most high tier combos, either with effort or without effort. I'll get into that later. First, we have Super Senator Sans, or Super Science Sans. With the right amount of skill, he can shred basically everybody. He can also, however, be beat by everybody. So really, he's the most skill-based and shad character in the game. If you main him, you are probably either one of the most skilled people in the game, or one of the campiest people in the game. Because if you camp, he does more damage. I am a mix of both, because I am a Super Senator Sam Chad main. Next we have True Dust. If you are good with him, or good at aiming with him, he is an absolute monster. He could rival some of these higher tier characters that I'll go into later, if you're good with him. 
His skill ceiling is very, very high, though. He requires a lot more skill than people give people credit. People give True Dust Mains credit for. And overall, he's just really strong if you're good with him. If you're bad with him, you're probably going to lose most matches, though, so don't get ahead of yourself. Next, we have Exgaster. This character is painfully easy to use and basically validates a lot of things in the game, which is wild to me that this character hasn't been nerfed at all. Yes, he can be beat. Yes, there's obvious ways to exploit him. But if he, the Exgaster is good, he won't ever use the pool. And you'll literally be stuck in a limbo between trying not to get murdered by a bunch of hands and trying to get through 4k HP. Next, we have Extremely Difficult, aka probably starting to get into the best characters in the game. We have, first, Really Bad Time Sands. True KR on all of his moves makes him painfully overpowered. The only way to beat him is the Kindness combo, and even then, a good Really Bad Time Sands can beat at least one Kindness combo. So he basically invalidates every combo in the game, except Kindness, and can still beat Kindness if you're good with really bad time sands. So really, it's just, you have a chance of it just being a lose-lose situation. It is wild. Next we have Rejuvenation, or Phase 2 Rejuvenation, if you want to consider Sands of Papyrus Phase 1. And this character, I'm not even going to bother to explain it. He is just really strong and really campy and really powerful for no reason at all. Next, we have Enraged Phantom. I know people have been saying that Enraged Phantom should be an RNG tier, but honestly, I don't feel like he should because Phantom doesn't need Enraged Phantom to be usable. Ink Sans needs his vials and a good move to be usable at all. Spamton can do just fine in his base state. Sure, he ain't going to be in any higher win players, but he's going to be like most players in his win count and some higher than his win count. So I consider that good enough. Enraged Spamton, however, shreds basically everybody. His damage goes through the roof. His moves are really good because Spamtons are. And overall, he's just really tanky on top of it all. Very good character. Next we have Death. Wither Dash, Touch of Death. And before you say they patched it, they didn't patch the combo. They only patched one way to do it. I don't remember the other way to do it. But the, Froppy patched one way to do it. But then if you do it in the, a different order, it still works. It's so dumb. Next we have Omnipotent Saints. He significantly dropped off. At this point, he can be beat if there's just two Asgore's on your team. I feel like he's in need of a rework just to more balance him, because if you buff him at all, if Froppy buffs him at all, he'll become too busted. If he gets nerfed at all, he'll be too bad. Here's the high win version of the you either lose or tie when fighting against him tier. Pacifist Phase 2. Pacifist Phase 2 is... A can't be piece of crap. And if you so much as get hit by him, your HP gets obliterated. On top of the fact that he has the world ending ability, which cuts your HP down to 240. Or something like that. 250 at most, I think. I forgot. But anyway, point is, he can cut your HP down. He has a spammable bone zone and a spammable blaster. His whoopee cushion permanently cripples you. It is very good. Next we have the almost impossible tier. Basically they're almost impossible to beat with a full competent team. They're possible to beat, but it's like almost impossible to ever beat them. Especially if it's a competent player, you're barely ever going to get any wins off them. First we have Stage 10 Red. Stage 10 Red is pretty self-explanatory. 100 HP a hit, has multiple aimable moves that you can place down, unlike Unseen Ending Act 3, and is overall just very strong. Next we have, unfortunately they don't have Heroes Time Trio on here, but Heroes Time Trio would be above Stage 10 Red. 
And that's because Heroes Time Trio is basically Murder Time Trio Phase 1 through 3 combined into one annoying piece of crap. Campy, strong, and overall just overwhelmingly good. The only reason that MTG year is higher, which we'll go to now, is the fact that Phase 4 exists on MTT. That's the only reason Hero Time Trio is slightly weaker. MTT overall is better just because of Phase 4. And, and the fact that the um, Hero Time Trio Force just flings you to the wall, the Murder Time Trio Force can ragdoll you. Because it doesn't have a set spot to stop at. Next we have Sansta. I'm not even going to go too in-depth into this because I could make a whole video just on this guy. But Sansta can basically slow you permanently, get free cheer to get immense damage rivaling that of Era 404, make, just obliterate your health no matter what, and you can do nothing about it. Sansta is literally Sans and a festive outfit, and he's one of the best characters in the game. And he's only, what, 375 wins? I can't remember the top of my head. I think it's like 400 at tops. So a 400, approximately 400 wins character is almost, is stronger than the omnipotent king. Sans in a holiday outfit is stronger than an omnipotent god. That's froppy balancing. Anyway, next we have literally on the edge of being impossible, and that is UV Killer. UV Killer is on the edge of being impossible because he can run away forever, do absurd damage, and you can't catch him no matter what, basically. If he wants to, he can time you out. The car team doesn't get to time him out, he gets to time you out. And he can just obliterate your HP in two moves. Which is dumb. Next we have Pretty Much Impossible, aka the tier above this one. These guys are literally just don't try most of the time because you're probably going to lose. We have here King Multiverse. After his buffs to his blasters and overall getting the new ink abilities for his ink summon he is a monster i'd say like i still think he's balanced and he does require skill because if you don't land your blasters the match is gonna they're gonna time you out the cars can just time you out if you don't land your blasters but overall he ha he does require skill out of all these characters but he's top four because of how good he is if you're skilled He's just really strong. Next we have Evo Fatal. I'm not even going to go in depth on this one. It's Evo Fatal. Everyone knows how busted this character is. One glitch copy. Literally just copy then glitch and you just obliterate at least two people at once. The only way to even have a chance of beating him is SS Knives. But if the Evo Fatal can aim, it's literally impossible. Which is really dumb. Next you have Infected. Reworked Infected. I don't think I need to go too in depth on this. Some of his hitboxes are just broken and his overall damage is powerful. He hits like a literal truck. Well actually he hits like a literal freight train, but you know. Next you have Air 404 tier. Basically, since due to his new RNG, sort of RNG thing of the Taj, it's based on how many wins you get that determines the percent chance. At 50k plus wins, it's basically outright impossible. At 100k, you may as well give up. Like, you aren't going to kill him at all. At 50k, it's like a 50%... No, at 100k, it's like a 50% chance to dodge everything. At 50k, I think it's like a 25% chance. Like, he's still possibly beatable at 50k, it's just going to be really hard. At 100k, you may as well not try, because he's going to dodge just about half of the strikes you land on him. So it's not even worth trying. Anything lower than 50k, though, is probably, like, here-ish. 
Like, I'd say he's, like, top of pretty much impossible if you don't have 50k wins. If you do have 50k wins, he's basically impossible. And at 100k, he is impossible. Anyway, that'll be it for this. This was 45 minutes of me going over our tier list. That was, uh, very long. Anyway, I will see you all next time. I hope you all managed to watch this. If you don't, I completely get it, because, well, it's 45 minutes. Anyway, feel free to let me know what you think of this, and I probably won't be doing voiceovers anymore after this, because I was kind of forced to, but I just want to see what y'all thought. Later.